In today's Fit Life Win, we are talking about getting your summer body ready. Right on cue, people are making the mad dash to the gym. And one of the key components, the beach body of your dreams, is a tight tummy. Strength and conditioning specialist Dr. Ivan is back on the News One Now set to break down his secrets to a six pack. Dr. Ivan, welcome back to News One Now. Thanks for having me back. Now, I understand from a little birdie that you are a six pack specialist who doesn't do any crunches. How is that possible? Um, you know, we've, we've learned over the years that you cannot spot reduce. You can't, you know, look at a particular area that we want to lose fat in and choose an exercise accordingly. It doesn't work that way. Our body loses fat systemically, so we need to use exercises that create a global metabolic response, exercises that will stimulate hormones like testosterone and growth hormone, things like uh, squats and deadlifts and calisthenics. Uh, high intensity interval training. These are things that will engage the whole body and burn calories, not only while you're exercising, but even well afterwards. Uh, you can't simply do a crunch or a sit up and think that uh, it's gonna do you justice, especially if you have layers of fat over it. You're looking at me very intently about layers of fat. I do have two children, <laughs> and so I know that my crunches aren't always affected, but tell me, why is a six pack even important? You know, look, beyond just vanity, it's for our survival. What we know is that abdominal fat or central obesity is linked with a host of diseases, uh, diabetes, hypertension, stroke, uh, cancer, so there are so many of them and so we could prevent these things simply by monitoring our belly fat. Uh, certainly it's not going to replace going to the doctor but it's a, it's a simple barometer to use to uh, gauge our own health. Um, so we want to have a, a slim stomach. Again, you know, I, I think most of us would like to sport a flat stomach when we're at the beach or pool but think of it more so in terms of uh, achieving optimal health. And what are some of the myths people have? You talked about spot training and trying to get rid of your, your stomach fat by just a crunch or two. What are other myths people have about how you can reduce your stomach fat and get that ideal six pack for optimal health? Yeah, um, there, there are a lot of, look, we, we live in a society where we want immediate gratification. I call this microwave fitness. Uh, we want to get a six pack tomorrow, but it simply doesn't work that way. So, you know, doing crunches, drastically cutting down calories, doing long bouts of cardio. Uh, my favorite of all uh, are the, um, the waist trainers. Uh, you know, it's just completely pseudoscience. These things don't work. But um, the reason they don't... You know the Kardashians are furious right I now, know, right? Because that's their entire we, thing is I the waist know, trainers know, and everyone else's. Look, you, you might as well put bags around your waist and sweat that way because that's all you're doing, you're sweating, but the moment you drink a glass of water, you're gaining that weight right back. If it were that simple, I'd do it. But, you know, having a six pack is more of a lifestyle. There's no one singular thing that we could use, no one silver bullet that we could use to get a six pack. It's more of controlling and hacking your body's chemistry. Um, and we do that a variety of different ways. Let's talk about that. I know you can't do the quick fixes, and obviously there are really there's no, no magic pill. But what can you actually be doing in the gym or in your lifestyle to make that change? Um, <clears throat> well, you know, you got to stick to the basics. But in terms of exercise, again, as I mentioned, you want to choose exercises that are going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. Uh, these things are movements where multiple body parts are moving at the same time. I'm a big proponent of squatting deadlifting, uh, calisthenics of all sorts. I think these are all ways to stimulate your metabolism um, and to um, increase your muscle mass. These are all things that will have a longer lasting effect than simply cardio or long steady state cardio alone. You know, that's, that's you know, a myth that I you know, like to talk about a bit because when you're doing long bouts of cardio without doing uh, weight training or intensity training, uh, it, long bouts of cardio are considered to be catabolic, so they break down muscle tissue. And when you're breaking down muscle tissue, you're in essence gonna lose your ability to burn fat even while at rest because but it I lowers your you metabolism. I thought you wanted to tear those muscles so it can be rebuild, and that was gonna be a good thing for it. With with weight training, with intensity training, you you will meet that minimal threshold to build muscle, but you're not gonna get that at suboptimal levels with long steady states of cardio. I think you know most of us have been to the gym and we've seen uh, men and women that 
are on the treadmill or the elliptical reading their magazine at a very suboptimal level and month to month their body simply doesn't change. There's a reason for that. We need to meet a minimal threshold if we want to have any appreciable change in our body. That includes a six pack. So you're talking about suboptimal and I know I've been guilty of being on that elliptical thinking I'm doing a great job sweating and texting at the same time, maybe watching News One. But tell me, how do people know what is an optimal level that they can be performing at? How will they know if they've achieved that? Um, it, you know, it's based upon um, intensity, and intensity will vary from person to person. A novice exerciser and an advanced exerciser, their intensity levels is, will change. But um, in essence, what you want to do is you want to use exercises that are going to be at a percentage of your capacity. And usually it's a high enough percentage where it's not easy to speak, it's not easy to have a conversation. Um, if, you're, if you can very easily have a conversation while you're exercising, while you're squatting, or while you're doing intensity, uh, high intensity interval training, you're not working at a high enough level. Now there's a caveat to this. I don't think uh, novice exercisers should just right off the bat get involved in high intensity interval mm -hmm. training. I think you need to establish a foundation for two to three months of some steady state aerobic activity. But thereafter, I think that's when we could start implementing other forms of exercise so that we can make these appreciable changes. So how about those like Fitbits and watches that allow you to monitor your optimal level? Will those help us to achieve that level? I, you know, I, I think it, it's a, it's a, a source of biofeedback. It, it will incentivize us because it gives us information, information that we can monitor, measure, and uh, ac accordingly make some changes with our body. So I, you know, look, every little bit helps, and I think in, in that respect, that information that it gives us is worthwhile. So three things, it's lifestyle, it's optimal level, and what else will help us achieve the level we want? Um, a, an optimal level in terms of... Of our fitness. Um, we want to, well, there, there, there's more than just exercise mm -hmm. that's going to get you to that point. You know, a big portion of this that, you know, it's hard to discuss in a short segment is diet. Um, diet is a critical component um, in losing weight. Um, all in all, I, I would say speak with your registered dietitian or your primary care physician to get to that optimal level uh, to get a six pack. Uh, but most of the diets, what we realize is that, you know, they're reduced carbohydrate, moderate fat intake, Great. but good fat. Um, well, sounds like it's a lifestyle change that has to happen. Dr. Ivan Hernandez, thank you for joining us here thank today you. on News thank One. Thank you. Thank you.